and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way and adore my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today on this Sunday. You see the title of the video. The deer, the original smoke ducker. <laughs> or maybe we should call him the duck <laughs> since he's constantly ducking the smoke. Um, apparently recently, and shout out to Dreamers Pro because I, I first saw this uh, on Dreamers Pro maybe a day or two ago and I actually meant to cover it then, but uh, no better time than the present. So yeah, the 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 deer says he doesn't play one on one because it's not real basketball. And I find that very interesting. I find that very interesting that LeBron James uh, would say something like that. And, you know, ironically, it's always people who can't do something uh, <laughs> that tend to knock the activity or you know it's like some someone who can't afford uh a lexus is oh, oh man i don't like lexus anyway you know let lexus that's that's not a real car <laughs> you know it, it lebron james has it seems like a history of multiple people beating him in one-on-one -on -one to the point to where uh, it's kind of like the dunk contest now. I, I believe LeBron James never wanted to participate in a slam dunk contest because he is afraid of going head up versus another player. It's cool when it's a team because you got plenty of scapegoats around. You have your other teammates who you can scapegoat. Uh, you have the refs that you can scapegoat. Uh, you have the coaches that you can scapegoat when it's a team. But when it's one-on-one, -on -one, wh whether it's the dunk contest or actually one-on-one -on -one basketball, you have no one to blame. So when you lose, all of the spotlight is on you. And you know, uh, there's, you know, um, it's been said that uh, who's Michael Beasley has beat LeBron James several times. Uh, D. Wade has beat LeBron James. It's even uh, rumored that Chad Ochocinco Johnson, the football player, people, the football player, uh, <laughs> beat LeBron James in one-on-one -on -one as well. And I tend to believe uh, that this is true for the simple fact that Chad Johnson came on LeBron James' show, The Shop, and uh, challenged him directly, like right there on LeBron James' on show, The Shop. Chad Johnson... You know, basically punked him right there. I, I mean, if you haven't seen that episode with Chad Johnson, go watch it. Like I said, it, it it wasn't LeBron really didn't want that smoke. And, you know, uh, but it should be no surprise. I, I think we're going to start calling them the duck. Uh, <laughs> that, that might be more appropriate. Uh, but anyway, let's read this article. Uh, this says... Uh, Austin Reeves says LeBron James doesn't play one-on-one -on -one because it's not real basketball. Says Lakers guard Austin Reeves recently spilt the tea on LeBron James' philosophy when it comes to one-on-one -on -one basketball. During an outing to the uh, course with Buster Jack Goff, Reeves explained that LeBron only plays team ball because it's the real version of the game. Uh, Austin Reeves, I'll play anyone one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm not saying I'm going to win, but I'll play anybody. Buster, would you play LeBron 1v1? Austin Reeves, yeah. Buster, have you played LeBron James one-on-one? -on -one? Austin Reeves, nah, he don't play 1v1. He said one-on-one -on -one is not real basketball, which I kind of agree. And it says uh, Austin Reeves, 26, joined the Lakers in 2021 after going undrafted. His unexpected uh, rise to stardom made him a featured member of the rotation. And now he's the third man down from LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Over the years, Reeves has de developed a close and personal relationship with James. And he's gotten to know his habits inside and out. 
Interestingly, out of their entire time together, Reeves has never faced LeBron in a one-on-one matchup, and that's likely by design. James, <laughs> James, who is uh, always honing his skills on the court, has a very particular view when it comes to the <laughs> when it comes to the game in its purest form. For many, one-on-one basketball can be exciting to watch, and fans have advocated for a similar event to be added to the All-Star game. But for others, basketball is best displayed in a full team setting where players can work with each other to find the best shot. Uh, LeBron James has always been more of a team-oriented player, so it makes sense that he sees one-on-one action as a dishonest form of the game. Wow, this 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 is completely ridiculous. Uh, for James, basketball is about making reads, understanding your opponent, and using your connection with teammates to get the best shot possible. Those elements don't exist with one-on-one games, which are primarily influenced by individual skill and the size difference between players. While LeBron has played one-on-one with his sons, of course he has, uh, (coughs) before even breaking a backboard during a shootout with Bronny, it seems that he prefers to work out or practice with them so that they can build skills that are better suited for team success. Well, he hadn't done a good job so far uh, because Bronny's not ready to be in the NBA. But hey, who, who needs skills to be in the NBA when... You got the ultimate uh, manipulator and power tripper in LeBron James who will just get you in there. Uh, Says so far, the results have been impressive. The first team mentality has made LeBron one of the biggest teammates in the league, and he's gotten a mountain of accolades to show for it as a four time champion. Six-time finals losses, four times MVP, and 20-time All-Star. James is on the GOAT track right now, and he still has more time to accomplish even more. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, people. So you can see that this is complete foolishness. What this is called is, uh, like I said, this is called the ultimate duck in the smoke tactic tactics by trying to make some excuse that uh fanboys will believe and and lebron james supporters will believe but uh all of us who watch basketball because it's about competition know that the reason lebron james doesn't do one-on-one is because he doesn't have skills to go one-on-one is he doesn't have the killer mentality to go one-on-one this is what this is about uh to say that uh one-on-one isn't real basketball first of all let's talk about this uh most of the the players in the top five and i would say with with the exception of the centers because the centers just uh play a different role completely but players in the top five who would be uh i would say from small forwards on down from your larry birds to your magic johnsons obviously michael jordan and kobe bryant I guarantee you all of those guys are great one-on-one players. All of them are great one-on-one players. Uh, To me, um, basketball is unlike any other team sports because a person's one-on-one skills can greatly affect the game. Uh, If you are a better one-on-one player, it's not like that takes away from the game LeBron James. It actually enhances LeBron James. This is why you have six finals losses. LeBron James, this is why you have had to have one-on-one players to do the work that you couldn't do. This is why you needed a Kyrie. This is why you needed a D-Wade. It's because these guys can actually use their one-on-one skills to get off a shot when you can't. When it gets down to the crucial moments and the t- and everybody on the other team knows that your only two options is to put your head down and try to barrel to the basket, and that's why you got tied up with in uh, in Denver. What was it? Two years ago now. Uh, or to to simply chuck up a three. The, the the everybody watching knows that these are your only two options. So you have to have 
uh, um, players who are great one-on-one players who are better than you to be on your team to to take those kind of shots. Players who who can actually create a shot in any circumstances. Players who can, you know, uh, get to a spot and do a one-two pull-up. You know, players who can do more than just stiff arm their way to the basket. This is why you have to have those kind of players is because, again, this is this is all just a cop out. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. Uh, You know, to to me, this kind of behavior really is, is. Number one is so disingenuous, but I, I think it really comes from, like I said, not only obviously a, a severe case of insecurity, but it's it's also some jealousy there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I, I believe LeBron James is jealous of a lot of players uh, who have those kind of skills. I believe LeBron James was actually jealous of Kobe Bryant for a lot of reasons. But, but that being one of them is that Kobe was ready for the smoke. Having one-on-one skills does not take away from the tech. Uh, uh, in basketball, you need both. But having one-on-one skills, it, it adds to it. It's a plus. It's not like uh, there are two separate things. It's not like, oh, well, you know, there's the team game and there's one-on-one skills. Like, no, they, they coexist in the game of basketball. Like I said, more so than any other team sport, basketball can greatly be affected by one-on-one players, by people who are great one-on-one players. Um, And not to mention, players who play a lot of one-on-one, to me, it enhances a lot of the skills that you will need during the game, again. It, it, it enhances that ability to be able to create a shot. It enhances your defensive ability. Like players who are great one-on-one players, like the players I named, like your Michael Jordans, your Kobe Bryant, your Larry Birds, uh, your Magic Johnsons, usually are pretty solid defenders at, at the very least. At the very least, they're usually solid defenders because you have to be in a one-on-one situation because you can't be saved by anybody. You can't uh, just force a person left into a double team or, you know, you can't do that kind of stuff. It is all on you to stop this player uh, from from getting to the basket or or from being able to pull up and hit a jumper over you. It, it is completely up on you. Uh, you know, not to get sidetracked, but that's kind of like one of the things that I, I felt disappointed when the NBA started allowing zone defense. Because to me, zone defense was for college. Uh, you know, in college, you you get to play zone defense, but by the time you make it to the NBA, it's time to man up. You you don't get to play zone defense. Uh, and to me, like, it's, it's just another cop-out and another way of which the, the modern NBA players have, have this advantage. You know, is to be able to play zone when back in the day, you know, yeah, of course you could send double teams or whatnot. But in general, you had to play your man. And, uh, you know, <laughs> this is something else Kenny uh, Smith said on the um, Come Talk to Me podcast with Mark Jackson and his son. And he said, like, when did this term two-way player even become a thing? And I remember hearing that for the first time. It was like, when I first heard that, I honestly didn't know what it was. It was like a two-way player. What? (coughs) What is that? Oh, it's somebody who plays both ends of the ball. Uh, Isn't that the standard protocol to to be a basketball player? (laughs) I mean, that's what I always thought, is that you had to play both ends of the ball. Uh, You had to play both sides of the game. And so, yeah, and now... We're in a modern age where it's two-way players. So, and LeBron is not one of those uh, fanboys. He's LeBron James is not a two-way player. He may have been at one point, but LeBron James hadn't been a two-way player for years now. 
Uh, but anyway, <laughs> we gonna hold up here. I, I just needed to address this this continuous uh, deflecting and disingenuous by the duck, uh, by LeBron James. Instead of just simply saying, "Hey, you know what? One on one is not my game." Uh, simply saying, "Hey, you know what? I I I probably couldn't beat a lot of players on one on one." Uh, simply saying, hey, you know what? <laughs> a lot of players have already beat me in one-on-one. I, I, I choose not to do that. You know, I'm, instead of just being honest, he says stuff like this. You know, the, the most disingenuous stuff ever is, oh, I, I, well, you know, I'm not into one-on-one because because uh, uh, that that's not real basketball. You know, when one-on-one is not real basketball when you're a pass first player like me you know when you're somebody who's worked so hard at standing at the top of the key and and waiting for my other teammates to do the work to get open so I can get them a pass uh you know so I can make the assist and 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 uh build up my stats you know I, I work so hard at standing around and just being able to watch that that takes a lot of skills to to stand at the top of the key and and watch everybody with a detailed eye so you can see the split second that your teammate uh makes a cut from running all around the court uh so that you can create that pass or you know sometimes i get my assist by you know i'll i'll pass it to my teammate and he uh take about 20 dribbles and, and back up and step a jumper but you know I still get the credit for the assist because you know because uh, I'm the king and I should get the credit I'm, I'm entitled to that right <laughs> anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments what do you think of the duck and his comment <laughs> about uh, one on one on one is not real basketball Apparently, I guess he's saying one-on-one has no place on the court. He's simply been saved by one-on-one players time and time again in his career. If it wasn't for the one-on-one players, uh, LeBron James only has one, uh, one Mickey Mouse ring. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. All right.